Naghahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the feature of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Kaya kito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa atin Ito ang radio ko Being one radio Being one radio Dahil mahal namin kayo Being one radio Being one radio Para sa inyo ito G81 Radio Ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino Basta all hits o Pinoy Panalo Merong kwentong iyakan at tawanan Kahit nasaan ka man ito'y Views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the program anchors and producers and do not necessarily reflect the policies and position of this station. We now bring you the program that brings together leading personalities, representative insights, all together in a meaningful and delightful conversations as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Hosted by Breakthrough Millennial Boomer, Gracie Venezuela, only here on V81 Radio. Almighty God, grant us the courage of Jesus Christ, your Son, to face the coronavirus pandemic with trust, strength, compassion, and resiliency. Give us the grace of the Holy Spirit to free us from fear and anxiety so we may do actions of help and support and look forward to our healing with hope. We pray for the health workers, food liners, maintenance cleaners, logistics abler, government leaders, and volunteers who continuously come together to deliver our daily needs to survive. Guide us from this time of crisis, preserve us in peace, protect the weak and vulnerable, and those who serve the society during this pandemic. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the initial broadcast of Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. I'm Tita Gracie, Gracie Venezuela, and uh, I represent the South Station of V81 Radio Worldwide. And for this initial telecast of uh, this show, I would like to thank management of V81 Radio for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And I'd like to call on Mr. Rolly Pagaspas and Mr. Charlie Diaz, who will be with me in this initial broadcast. Charlie, Rolly? Hi. Hi, guys. And first and foremost, we'd like to welcome you to the V81 Radio Worldwide family. And uh, you're now with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you feeling, Charlie? Happy Easter. Well, uh, we just, uh, you know, an hour ago, we just finished one radio program, uh, Talk Shop Asia, and now we're, we're supporting you in your uh, inaugural uh, program, and it really looks great. Yes, I'm very grateful to you guys, and uh, I, I'm really excited for this uh, broadcast because we have some very exciting and articulate guests with us, and... Uh, Truly, this Easter is uh, going to be a new birth, a new beginning for V81 Radio South Metro Manila because this is the initial broadcast of our South Station and I'm very glad to be part of it. Yes. Well, for the benefit of our audience, we'd like to tell you that uh, uh, Let's Chat with Tita Grace is the pioneer program of V81 Radio South Manila. So we'd like to give you a raise and applause being the pioneering program and anchor of the 81 South Manila. Fantastic. Uh, I am raring to go. And uh, for this afternoon, uh, I would like to uh, introduce our guests who will be joining us for two hours of energizing conversation, which will characterize and set the mood and the tone for all our future episodes of Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. So, gentlemen, with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guests. Our first guest, our first guest this afternoon is a veteran broadcast journalist, and he's got a uh, column with Philippine Star. He's well known around sports circles. He is a producer and a journalist, and he's got a lot of followers, and he is also one of the guys who... It's like a social barometer. He's observant and very articulate about what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Bill Velasco. Good evening, Gracie, and good evening, everybody watching. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Bill. How are you doing? Uh, okay, I made a uh, weekly trip to the grocery to restock on supplies and uh, got home in time to, to do this broadcast. I'm really grateful for this opportunity so we can really influence people, calm some people down, and, uh, you know, give them direction. Fantastic, Bill. And, you know, we're going to be joined by a pal of yours, and I'm now going to introduce him. He's none other than um, Boyet Season of uh, DZMM Teleradio and ANC, our favorite uh, DJ among my <laughs> generation. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Boyet. Hello, Gracie. Hello, Bill. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to be uh, back on air, although uh, it's been uh, quite a while since I've been in front of a camera. But nonetheless, uh, I'm very, very uh, proud and happy to be on your initial foray into broadcasting, Gracie. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I couldn't think of two better guys to be with me, <laughs> giving me the confidence and the impetus to move forward. We've worked we both, all three of us have worked on several projects in the past, and this is going to be a breakthrough event, not just for, for me, but for V81 South Station, as this is the initial telecast uh, and broadcast of our South Station here in Metro Manila. And we're going to be joined by another colleague of mine in the advertising industry, and uh, she is one of the winningest creative directors in uh, Metro Manila. Um, she's none other than Boots Season, the CEO and president of Big Big Bang. Boots, are you there? Hi, Gracie. Hello, Happy Boots. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yes, yeah, some people will contest. Uh, we're doing quite well. We, uh, I was the food runner for the day, 
and I came back in time. Uh, Gracie, a little caution and the winningest. A lot of people <laughs> might contest that, okay? Let's not use superlatives, okay? <laughs> okay. Well, thank uh, you. But I love you, but please, okay? Temper, a bit of uh, yeah. you know, You know, but. Uh, Tayong tatlo dito talagang a mutual admiration society for this <laughs> afternoon because I think uh -huh. that we all, all of us have uh, have had milestones in our careers uh, over the years. I'm not gonna mention how long, but I think what makes today's reunion because I feel like this is a reunion. I feel that this reunion on air is going to be a breakthrough reunion for us because. As you all know, life as we knew it prior to March 2020 is gone. Now, from March onwards, the entire world, not just the Philippines, the entire world will be living under the threat of COVID-19. This novel coronavirus is truly changing the paradigm, not just of our daily lives, but of our respected professions because all three of us are in the communications business. So not just new media anymore, because the, before with the advent of digital, everyone was talking about new media. Yes. But from now on, we are going to be dealing with the new normal in communications with the pandemic hovering over all of us. So this afternoon, we're going to take a closer look at how we are all coping so bill what did you what happened when you first heard about the lockdown and what did you do well i think the first uh, realization i had was uh, you know we we really don't know how big this thing is um i'd like to compare it to other earth-shaking events for example uh, war you know uh, my grandfather uh, was a college graduate in world war ii so our generation and even our parents didn't, were, had no awareness of earth-shaking events like war. The closest thing you could uh, compare this to is maybe 9-11, but that basically just impacted entry points to countries, you know, ports and, and air, airports and all of that, heightened security. And now uh, there's uh, homeland security in the United States. And all of a sudden, there was a lot of mistrust with particular nationalities. Uh, in this case, uh, the disconnect that a lot of people are feeling uh, that was the first thing that uh, that affected me. You know, like there is no way we can we can resume our daily lives anymore. We can't just meet people whenever we want to. We can't just you know go on coverage like uh, Boyet and I would do. And, and there is really this dramatic shift in the way life as we know it has become. You know, to this day, we're all you know cooped up in our homes. There is really for a lot of us no no way to make a living for example there are no sports for for boy and me to cover so what are we going to do uh there are no events for for let's say you and, and boots to create and in general there's this feeling of isolation there's a lot of people don't know what's going to happen next really uh i think people are going to be shocked at how long it will actually take us to go back to a semblance of what we thought was normal yes bill thank you for that you brought out several interesting uh, points. Hold on to those thoughts because we're going to revisit those thoughts later when we delve deeper into this afternoon's conversation. How about you, Boyet? Um, with this new normal, how are you coping? What do you think should be your new strategy as a radio and TV broadcaster and a DJ at that? Well, you know, for one, the technology has already changed. Uh, the the way that people uh, are broadcasting from uh, their homes, uh, streaming is uh, was supposed to be was already getting to be the new normal, and now it is in fact what it is. It is the new normal yes. for how broadcasting is in a on a global scale. It's the same as how it is uh, the Philippines in all other parts of the world, wherein where COVID-19 is affected, wherein uh, when everybody was broadcasting as, you know, uh, to put it uh, in, in parallel, at 70 miles an hour, let's say, 
everybody started putting on the brakes now and started saying, wait a minute, we cannot go on like we used to. We have to operate in a different environment wherein we don't know, there are no definites. We don't know when it will end. We don't know who's affected at this point. You don't know how the disease actually gets to spread from day to day. You only get to know about it when somebody is already at the point where they are already grave, when the situation is grave already. So yes. as, time, as time goes, even the broadcasting industry has been very, very much affected because you cannot broadcast in studio. The technical aspects of being able to deliver the news has changed dramatically from it being a very controlled, a, being a very precise science to now being uh, more technically driven because, simply because of what they have to do to be able to put the news out there. But yeah. the dynamic by which it is being brought to the homes to the to the consumers is far different than how it normally is and i think it'll just keep on changing as long as this threat of covid 19 is present yes you mentioned that threat which is very real and uh, we now have new paradigms not just in daily life but certainly the broadcast industry has really become a, a a daily need everybody who is anybody in the broadcast industry um was caught unaware and we've all had to go through a a guerrilla mode because even the uh, international broadcasters are using their laptops their equipment at home to broadcast uh, their stories and that is going to be the new normal i think for a very long time now let's look at the other side of the fence, ladies and gentlemen, and which is why I invited uh, Boot Season uh, because she has been creatively involved in a lot of major advertising and public relations campaigns for some major brands over the past few years. And I would like to see her viewpoint. I would like to know her viewpoint. So what's with this new, new normal, what do you think is, this, is the impact in your business? Well, on a very personal level, Gracie, we had two projects that are put on ice. Okay, those are two events. One was supposed to be a major outdoor event that was going to involve children. The second one is uh, was going to be held in this in BGC, and it was going to invite you know the upper the two percenters of society. Uh, when this thing was announced and well, we were luckier than most because we had a sort of heads up and we were, you know, able to stockpile a bit on groceries. But the first thing the family did was to take stock of our resources because we happen to be paying employees. We have to we have to consider how we're going to belt tighten because our resources are not infinite. We we should be able to still pay salaries and commissions to our subcons and to our people. So that was a major, major part of the, it, it was number one on the list. And then the second, the second thing we did was, well, we, we evaluated our moral relationship with consumption, meaning to say, it was, you know, uh, there was an agreement in the family to simplify, simplify our lives. Uh, of course, obviously, because of the lockdown, there will be less dining out, uh, shopping online. So basically, those were the two things, taking stock of what you have and with the view of being able to still provide not only for your family, but also for your employees. And of course, uh, I also asked our partners to download Zoom, the app, so that we will be able to, uh, you know, meet digitally. We also uh, did a little dipstick on our clients and who are still into Skype and who are, you know, very familiar with Zoom before we found out that, you know, there's something 
not very uh, encouraging about its use. So there, we took stock of everything that's at hand, and then we were prepared to brace for the worst because we knew that the first things clients do cut down is the advertising budget, and we we recognize that. So, and then the last thing I did was I I took out all my notes on digital marketing and boned up okay i yes. pressed up on trends okay because it's inevitable we're going to shift we're going to do the digital shift tv yes. is going to be non-existent everybody's going to migrate from print to to digital so we had to bone up we had to really right. up. you you Rush actually up. pointed out you actually pointed out the re the reality of the transition of our audiences from mainstream media to digital, which has actually been going on uh, over the past couple of years now. And as this threat of the COVID-19 all up, everything just went from, you know, from left to right, 180 degrees overnight. From those people who were still clinging on to traditional media, all of a sudden that stopped and everyone just went into uh, digital. digital. So Everybody you're right. Audiences' media consumption habits have switched drastically almost overnight because, and, uh, and everything's on real time. Uh, everybody's connected. Yeah, everything's on real time. There's no more lag time. And, uh, and if I may say this, the consumer has become a real person with much power in his hands to click like, to bash, to comment, to share. Okay, these are things that you were, what, a tad, you know, it wasn't really something that you had to encounter face to face in our early years of advertising. Not that we, you know, hark back to the old days of advertising, <laughs> but before we had to depend on on day after recall, day after testing, so that we'll know how it is. But now everything is real time. You yes, see everything is on real time. Immediately, the likes just actually, multiply and you have to react. Right. Real time. And actually, these two guys who are with us are Sanai. They're really well versed with handling things on real time because they're they're, they're so seasoned into sports and uh, yeah. uh, um, management. Uh, so uh, I'd like to call back Bill and um, Wyatt. Are you? Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, with the comment of Boots about this new normal, new normal. Um, and we are all communication practitioners here. Um, how do you think we will now address the needs of our new of our audiences given the new normal? Bill, well, would well, you I like think, to start? I, I think uh, first of all, no, that's an excellent observation. Uh, it's going to be like it's already become the wild, wild west, uh, especially on social media, because the responsibility, the burden now of filtering information is on the shoulders of, of the, the viewer yeah, right. yeah. They, they, you know now, now they have to have rules and they have to have some training to filter out what is fake news what is conjecture uh what images have been processed and just stolen from somewhere else right um, because even even traditional media they they have their own agenda sometimes they sometimes they do things with malice uh beforehand so there's really going to be that 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 need uh to train uh, audiences, and that's one of the things I've been trying to do on social media and in my column in the Philippine Star, is basically to tell people, do not react, respond. In other words, take action, yeah. find out, is this okay. a legitimate source? Uh, wh where did the information come from? Who said it? When was it said? Yeah, uh, uh, Bill, you, you brought out some, right, those are very interesting Whoa. points, and we're going to go yeah. into those points deeply when we go into our Thank next you. segment. But very quickly, Boyet. Given your perspective from the uh, traditional broadcast industry of radio and TV, with this new normal, with the demands of our new audiences, how are, how do you think will broadcast media adjust? You know, the problem here, yes, I, I will echo what Bill said a while ago. The sources of news for the individual has now expanded. Even your kapit bahay now can be a source of your news. Even your titos and your titas are your sources of your news. Why? Because you trust them. It's all a matter of trust. 
who do you trust? Do you trust the the, the people who legitimately or the, the traditional media that delivers the news? Sometimes a lot of our citizens don't anymore. Why? Because sometimes they don't agree with it. Or sometimes they, they, they think or they feel there's a certain agenda behind it. And it happens yes. a lot for, 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 for many people. Now, how, how do we move forward with that? How does this group move forward? The problem now, and my screen is hanging, I know. Uh, how do we move forward? That's not a very good uh, pause right there. Uh, the problem now is how, how do we get the people to again trust legitimate news organizations and not really just keep on listening to the kapit bahay, listening to your answer uncles for the lawless and lawless who are not tech savvy to stop sharing all of these things that they see on social media and passing it off as the real thing right right and boy hold on to that thought like i i mentioned earlier because this is just the start of this very interesting chat that we're all having so friends out there welcome again to let's chat with tita gracie we're gonna pause right now for a quick break when we come back we're gonna continue our discussion on the new normal as seen by our communication leaders take it away v81 tech We'll be back shortly with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie only here on V81 Radio. Easter is meant to be a symbol of hope, renewal, and new life. Remember, God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. He is risen. Happy Easter from V81 Radio. Throughout history, humankind has prevailed in our darkest moments, coming together to face the very thing that would extinguish our light. This is not one of those moments at all. This is a moment for pretty much the opposite, for hiding, for laying low. Napping is also good. Saving humankind by really, really not getting near it. We're playing games, staring at screens, staring at anything. All are the stuff of heroes. Every generation has its moment where individual sacrifice makes way for the good of those who will come after. A higher purpose. This one is ours. Pinoy, tatlap Pinoy. The future of radio. This is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station. This is V81 Radio. Worldwide. Ito ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino. Basta all hits all Pinoy panalo. Merong kwentong iyakan at tawaan na. Kahit nasaan ka man ito'y mapapakinggan. Radio, 